is your relationship with God and that he needs to be first in your life, the things you put before him will keep you in darkness. The things you put before him will keep you in despair and you'll walk around in circles going nowhere wondering why things are not going the way that you want them to go. Wondering why things aren't going right. You'll be circling around looking for love in all the wrong places. Things aren't working, aren't, aren't working out because our eyes are on the wrong thing, relying on the wrong things, putting our hope in the wrong things. But breakthrough, that's what we're talking about today. Breakthrough happens when you realize who is most important in your life. Breakthrough also happens when you focus on the right stuff. That's my second point. Breakthrough also happens when you're focused on on the right stuff. Remember this, what we focus on, what we look at determines our direction and our thinking. What we focus on, what we look at determines our direction and our thinking. Your focus can determine your reality. Your focus can return and you can determine your reality. What is the eye again? What did the Bible say? The Bible says it's the lamp of the Bible. Excuse me, it's the lamp of the body. It's the lamp of the body. If we focus on goodness, good things going to come to you. If you focus on evil, bad stuff, bad stuff will come your way. If you focus on failure, failure finds a way to creep into your situation. If you focus on what people say, it, it tends to sound like truth. If you focus on what you don't have, you, tilt, you tend to feel like you're coming up short. You know, we wonder why we can't get along with people. Anybody have a problem getting along with people? That's because you always watching Real Housewives of Atlanta. <clears throat> you watching WAGs. What are those? The WAGs. I don't know about this stuff. That's why we can't get along. People wonder why our families are fighting all the time and we can't get along and families are breaking up because at the end of the day, we out here watching Empire. Your father figure is Lucius Lion and your mother figure is Cookie Lions. You in a bad situation. We wonder why our homes are all messed up. All you gotta do is look at your DVR on your TV and you'll figure out the answer. We wonder why we don't know how to respond to the challenges of life. All you have to do is look at the top five people in your last recent calls on your phone and you'll realize who you need to stop answering. How can they tell you what you're supposed to be doing when they're doing worse than you? You got to watch who you seek for guidance. Some folk are gatekeepers for the Grand Canyon. They just waiting at the entrance for you to fall flat on your face down into the depths of destruction, down into a ditch so that you cannot recover. Breakthroughs happen when you're focused on the right stuff. But breakthroughs also happen when this, when you're ready for it. See, a lot of times we're not ready for it. You know, things don't just happen in the time that we want them because you simply aren't ready for it. There's an old saying that it says, he may not come when you want him but it's always right on time. You know, if anyone has ever been to a real pizzeria, and I'm not talking about Pizza Hut or Papa John's, I'm talking about a real authentic place that serves good pizza, the dough is the best. At real pizzeria, pizzerias, there's a reason why that pizza is so good. See, at a real pizzeria, the pizza dough goes through some major abuse before it's ready to turn into a delicious meal. It's slammed down on the counter and it's, it's treated rough. It's smashed by a rolling pin and it's flattened out and it's twirled around on a single finger and thrown in the air spinning. See, see, most people aren't thinking about the process of making the dough. We just want the good stuff. We want the pepperoni. We want the sausage. We want the cheese. I'm, I'm getting a little hungry right now. We want the mushrooms, we want the veggies, we want the sauce. But the good stuff doesn't get put on the dough until the dough is ready to receive it. See, many people want to see the goodness of God. We want to see the power of God. We want the blessings of God and wondering why it's, why it's not happening the way that we think that it should happen. Maybe it's because God is trying to tell you that you're not ready to receive it. Because number three, receiving a breakthrough requires a certain type 
of behavior. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says this for all my note takers. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. It says, in you, beloved, are the light of the world. A city built on a hilltop cannot be hidden. Similarly, it would be silly to light a lamp and then hide it under a bowl. When someone lights a lamp, he puts it on a table or a desk or a chair. And the light illuminates the entire house. Verse 16 says, you are like that illuminating light. Let your light shine everywhere you go, that you may illuminate creation. So men and women everywhere may see your good actions, may see creation at its fullest, may see your devotion to me, and may turn and praise your Father in heaven because of it. Now, what is this text saying to us? What is it saying? I, I don't get it. I, I know Jesus. I, I read my Bible. I, I try to be a good person. I, I try to do what's right. I, I, what, what is this really talking about? The text is trying to tell us this, that if you want to be promoted, you got to be the light. If you want promotion, you got to be a promoter of Jesus. You've got to shine. You can't hide the light. You've got to let others see the light. You've got to duplicate yourself. You've got to bring others to Christ. If you don't bring anything to the table, why should God bring something to your table? If you can't bring one person to church, why should God bring blessings to your situation? People want things added to their life, but they won't add one dollar to the kingdom. People want things healed in their life, but they won't do anything to help somebody else. People want all the rewards but won't give anything. But the Bible says this, if you can just represent the one who you are making the request to, if you can just tell somebody, if you can just be a light in a dark world, if you can be a giver like the giver of life, Jesus said this, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. If you promote me, then I'll prop you up. See, if you want a breakthrough in your life, you got to tell others about Jesus. Can somebody say, tell somebody? You got to tell somebody about Jesus. When you do this, you're glorifying God. And when you glorify God, that's when God can bless you. In turn, he can promote you. In turn, he will heal you. In turn, he will deliver you. Now, see, I remember this. I remember years ago. Here's something about promotion. I remember years ago, I had gotten my first, I'll call it, corporate job. I was still in high school and I was eager to start working. So I applied to a job at Allstate Insurance. How many of you got Allstate? Say amen. I'm glad most of you don't. I'm going to stay far. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. They had a position open in their customer development unit. And the truth is, the customer development unit is just a glorified name for the telemarketing department. And see, I was so happy to get this job. It was a highly coveted job because it, they paid me $20 an hour. Now, about 20 years ago, I was balling out of control. $20 an hour. And so luckily, I was hired for the job. However, about a month into the job, the, the, the entire floor, a unit of about 50 people, they were put in a room and one of the vice presidents came down and said this. He said, I'm sorry to inform you, but we're downsizing the customer development unit here at Allstate. And so everybody started whining and complaining. You can hear all the air come out the room and they were tripping out and, and the boss went on to say this. He said, but we're going to keep one person on. And so he said, for the next two weeks, whoever gets the people to sign up for new insurance they get to stay on with us and continue the job with a raise in pay. So you know I was chomping at the bit. So we had two weeks to do it. And, see, I, and so I got, to, got on the phones and I, I called as many people as I could. And I, I sold as many insurance packages as possible. Many people hung up on me. Many people got so upset, on me, upset at me uh, for all the calls. But the more people hung up, the more people I began to call. And eventually, out of all those people in our unit, there was one lone survivor, and that person is standing right before you. I got the job. Can somebody give God a hand clap of praise for that? 
over everybody else. And it wasn't because I was older. It wasn't because I was wiser. The reason they kept me was because I showed them that I was ready for the next level. See, I showed them that nobody was going to develop more customers than me. Nobody was going to represent Allstate better than me. What am I saying today? God can't take you to other levels until you can show him that you're ready to be promoted. So you ask, how do I get promoted? How do I get to that next level? How do I get to my breakthrough? First of all, you've got to call on the name of Jesus. It's through his blood that we were reconciled to God. We can't receive other breakthroughs. We can't receive promotions. We can't receive healings. We can't receive deliverances until we first believe in him and call on the name of the Lord. If you ever accepted him, if you've, if you've never accepted him as your savior and your leader of your life, truly in your heart, you got to do it today. Romans 10 13 says this for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved I don't know about you but you got to be saved say neighbor you got to be saved how else do you get promoted the second way you get promoted is through prayer say prayer we got to stop looking for people to make things happen in our lives and start storming the gates of heaven through prayer our struggles aren't against flesh and blood. Therefore, humans can't solve all of them. We wrestle against spiritual forces way, a bit, way, way above and beyond our human ability. Real deal evil, as I, as I like to say, can only be defeated through prayer. Jesus said we should be persistent in our prayers. We should pray without ceasing. And our Father in heaven will do what? We'll see that. And at the end of the day, we'll get justice. I don't know about you, but I could use a little justice in my situation. I can use a little justice in my life. Justice doesn't come through unforgiveness. Justin, justice doesn't come through foolishness. Justice doesn't come through anger. Justice doesn't come through resentment. Justice, justice comes from turning your problems over to the Lord. I don't know about you, but when I'm down and out, I need to turn my problems over to the Lord because the Lord said, I will work it out every single time breakthrough comes through prayer it also comes up comes comes through this giving up what's not good for you a lot of us do things that aren't good for us mark chapter 9 starting in 14 jesus taught that some spiritual breakthroughs will not happen without prayer and without fasting and see, fasting is not just about giving up food. It's about giving up practices in your life that hinder your progress. See, some folk are two minutes away from some awesome things happening in their life. You're one puff of smoke away from good health. You're one less bottle away from peace of mind. You're one less purchase away from financial freedom. You're, you're one more no to somebody away from God's next yes in your life. Giving up some things, what it does is it shows God that you're serious. It shows God that you mean what you're doing. Giving up on a few things and a few bad attitudes shows God that you've got that five-letter word called faith. The Bible says even the small amount of faith will do some powerful things like move mountains in your life. Faith can help you to healing in your life. Faith can lead to deliverance in your life. Faith can turn your situation around in an instant. Can you just have a little bit of faith? Somebody say faith. Give, giving up always, always unlocks you to some better things in your life. If we can only give up our impatience and be more patient, Hebrews chapter 6 teaches us that those that have patience inherit what's been promised. Because what I want to say to you this morning, breakthroughs only happen to those who realize that he or she may, that at the end of the day, he may not come exactly when you want him, but he's always right on time. And as I close today, breakthrough happens when we forgive. You know, Jesus said, if you're holding on to grudges, if you're holding on to offenses, if you're hating somebody, if you're hating on somebody, 
the devil has a foothold on your life. But if you learn to let go of those things, the Bible teaches that the peace of God will encumber your life. The peace of God will encumber your situation. Forgiveness is not just a feeling. It's not just an emotion. But forgiveness is a choice. So if you want a breakthrough in your life, if you want a breakthrough out of what's encumbering you from God's best for your life, you've got to learn to forgive. If you want a breakthrough, it's all about making the right choice. I ask you today, are you willing to make the right choice? And lastly, another way that you'll get to a breakthrough, and I don't want you to forget this, and many of us have already gone through this, but you can keep on doing it. Another way to get through a breakthrough is to repent. See, God didn't save our souls so that we can wallow in what we did wrong. Many of us live in guilt. Many of us are still upset and still encumbered by what happened in our past. But isn't it good to know that Jesus paid it all? Isn't it good to know that he paid the price? Isn't it good to know that he made it where you can turn that situation around? That you don't have to live in the past. You can live in a glorious future. So you don't have to wallow in guilt if you repent. You don't have to wallow in guilt if you just turn away. If you surrender your life. When you surrender, that's when God can take over. I ask you today. Is there somebody in this place that wants to surrender? If you're here today, you can surrender right now. You can surrender to all that stuff that's been going on. You can surrender to all the things that have been bothering you. You can turn away from it. You can repent. You can move forward with no more regrets. You can surrender. And if you surrender today, you'll break through it all. And here's the good part. When you do these things, when you work on these things, I always love a, a good conclusion. The Bible says this, 2 Corinthians, excuse me, 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 17, I believe. It says, but you will not even need to fight. See, the thing about it is we think that we have to fight our battles. But all you got to do is turn it over to the Lord. When you're in God's army, he'll fight your battles. When you're in God's army, he'll take you to a new beginning. When you're in God's army, you don't have to deal with it forever. Because at the end of the day, you are not alone. Will you stand with me today and give God a hand clap of praise? Give God some praise in this place. Give God some praise. You will not even have to fight. Bow your heads with me today. I believe there's somebody in this place that needs to surrender their lives. I believe there's somebody in this place that needs to turn it over to the Lord. I believe there's somebody in this place that needs a special prayer. I believe there's somebody in this place that's been looking for a breakthrough. If you've been looking for a breakthrough, I just want you to walk up to the front. If you've been looking for a breakthrough and you need a breakthrough, I just want you to come to the front right now. Don't be shy about it. Just come on to the front if you need a breakthrough. If you need a breakthrough in your life. If you're here today and you need to surrender your life to Christ, maybe you haven't asked Jesus to come into your heart. Maybe you don't have him as a source of your strength. Maybe you didn't think about what he did on the cross. You can come forward right now too. You can come and accept him right now. Maybe you don't have a church home. Maybe you need a church family. You can walk up too. You can walk up right now. Somebody needs to turn away. Somebody needs to turn away from what they've been doing because it hasn't been working. Somebody needs to surrender their lives right now and turn away and turn over to Christ and look towards the hills from whence cometh their help because their help cometh from the Lord today. I want to ask you to grab your neighbor by the hand. Grab your neighbor by the hand. If there's somebody in this place as our heads are bowed, I just want to talk to you right now. If you're here today and you haven't accepted Christ into your life, you haven't turned to God, you've been trying everything but God, I just want you to squeeze your neighbor by the hand right now. Just squeeze your neighbor by the hand right now. If you're here today and you know that you need to surrender your life to Christ. I'm going to tell you, hell is a hot place. In heaven, 
is the place you want to be in. And so if you aren't sure that you're going to heaven, if you don't know without a shadow of a doubt that if you were to die the minute you left this door of this church, that you weren't going to heaven, I want you to squeeze your neighbor by the hand right now. This is a serious moment. Everybody's head is bowed. Everybody's focused on God today. If somebody squeezed your hand right now, and I want you to just start praying for them right now. And saints, I want you to just start praying for people. Just start praying right now. Pray that the Holy Spirit will intercede in their life right now. Pray that they'll get courage to accept Christ into their life. Pray that they'll get courage to join the church. Pray that they'll ask for encouragement, that they'll ask for prayer. The Bible says, harden not your heart. When you feel the Holy Spirit weighing down on your heart, that's when you have to surrender. You can't fight any longer. We don't know what a day will bring. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We never know how long we have. All we know is that we have today. And we believe that when we accept Christ, we believe it will get better. There'll be hardships. There'll be some tough times. But we have better to look forward to. Your ladder will be greater than your past. If somebody squeezed your hand, heads are still bowed. I want you to just raise it. I just want to raise it. We're going to pray for you. If you're here today, raise that hand. Raise that hand today. If you're raising a hand, I see some hands across. If you're raising a hand today, I want you to whisper in their ear that you'll walk up with them. You'll walk up with them and come up with them for special prayer. Come up with them to just come to Christ today. I want to offer Christ to you today. If you're here today, I want you to walk up. The doors of my father's house are open. Come right now. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, give somebody, give God some praise right now. Give God some praise. I see one coming. Come on, come on. Did anybody else? Come on, you can come forward right now. Come on, come on, come on. If you're here today. Listen, let's go to God in a word of prayer. If there's a feeling of apprehension here today, no. There's other ways that you can join the fold. There's other ways that you can be a part of the church. There's other ways that you can accept Christ. I'm going to have you pray a prayer with me. And after you do that, I'm going to ask that you fill out a card in your pew. Or you can also sign up at the member 